Now, the last video that I posted was actually supposed to be the last video that I featured the Shure MB7 Plus. I even had the microphone packed up and everything ready to ship back and claim a refund on it. But then I woke up this morning with a question from someone who watched the last video and they asked a question about the audio quality differences between XLR and USB-C. This was actually flagged in another video that I watched where they reviewed it in much more detail than I did and there was a difference. But I figured whilst I still have the microphone, I may as well just run the test myself, seeing as it's quite a straightforward one. So how I'm conducting this test at the moment, I've got the Shure MB7 Plus connected into my Rodecaster Pro 2. It's set on the dynamic microphone at 55 dB with processing turned off. Then I've also got it connected through USB-C directly to my laptop into the Motive Mix app at plus eight dB with the noise suppressor and popper stopper turned on. So whilst I've got these settings laid out, let's just could do the quick plosive tests. So using the words in tribute to Tom Buck and podcast stage, that's Peter Piper picked a podcast. Peter Piper picked a podcast. Please bring Peter pronto. Please bring Peter pronto. Now I'm gonna turn off the digital popper stopper and noise suppression on the Motive Mix app. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Peter Piper picked a podcast. Peter Piper picked a podcast. Now, as you can see, I've got a firmware update, in fact. So I don't know if this is going to impact the audio quality at all. But as you can see here, the current firmware is 1.0.0.16. I'm going to update it to 1.1.0.17. After I do the plosive test one more time on the new firmware, I'm just going to talk through a few more points that I missed out on the last video about the microphone, and I'll just switch the audio between XLR and USB-C marks somewhere on screen. Right now, I'm running the update for the Shure MB7 Plus, and as you can see on screen here that the firmware is actually updating on the microphone, but I'm still actually connected via XLR into the Rodecaster Pro 2, and it is still registering my audio. So I do wonder if it's still recording through XLR whilst it's updating the USB-C firmware. Okay, the firmware seems to be updated now. It took a while. As you can see, it's on the latest firmware running 1.1.0.17. Did I say that right? And then you got your gain set to plus eight. All the settings kind of remain the same from before. They didn't actually change the settings on the actual software here. So real-time denoise is off, popper stoppers off. Can you hear a sound difference at all? Now we're recording. So let's try the plosive test again. That's Peter Piper picked a podcast. Peter Piper picked a podcast. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Turning that off, going back in, turning on, turning on. Do you know what? Let's turn everything off, including the limiter. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Peter Piper picked a podcast. Peter Piper picked a podcast. Now I've done the plosive test. I'll turn the limiter off this time as well. In previous audio tests, I believe I only just turned off the denoiser and the popper stopper. So the limiter was always left on. I don't know how much that would actually impact the audio if I'm completely honest, but just so you know, that is how the, the tests were conducted. As I'm doing an A-B testing on the same microphone, but just going to two different sources, there's no processing done on the Rodecaster Pro 2 and no processing done here now. So this is a bit more of a fair test, whether there's gonna be any difference in USB-C and XLR, because now there should be no processing done on either recording of the audio. So this should be a true representation of how the microphone sounds going out USB-C and XLR. That being said, I'm gonna switch it back. I'm gonna turn on the popper stopper and so forth just to see if that changes anything. So limiter back on, denoiser, popper stopper. So now we're all back on with the new firmware. Quick plosive tests. That's Peter Piper picked a podcast. Peter Piper picked a podcast. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. These are some tongue twisters, man. Now I think overall there should be enough of an audio test between the plosive test, just me generally talking, switching the audio between XLR and USB-C across both firmwares. So you let me know below whether you think that the firmware actually helped the audio quality at all, because um, I didn't actually read what the firmware does. I just updated it. I just saw the notice there and I just went, hey, click it and off you go. So you let me know below if you think the firmware actually improved the sound quality at all. I don't know if that the firmware was actually uh, released to help the sound quality or if it was to help other functionality, but you just let me know if you heard a sound difference between the old firmware and the new firmware. Just so I can give you some more audio so you can actually do some sound quality checks between the two sources. I'm just going to tell you a quick story about what happened the other day regarding the Shure MV7, the fake one that I've got. So as you might have seen in the last video that I actually did mention that the Shure MV7 that I had for the past couple of years was actually a fake. And I only realized that a couple of months ago. 
because it's a fake and because I've since upgraded to the short SM7B and the Electra Voice RE20, I clearly don't need that microphone anymore and it's just sitting around collecting dust. I've done the whole how to check for a fake short MV7 type of video and yeah, I don't need that microphone anymore and it was just sitting there collecting dust. So I put it on Facebook Marketplace for sale. But the interesting thing is, is that I actually advertise it as a USB-C microphone, I'll just put it generically. But I also included images of the microphone, so it appears to be a short MV7, but I actually stated in the title, just USB-C microphone, advertised it, I think for 100 pounds at first, got no interest, advertised it for 75, got no interest, advertised it for 60, and that's when I started getting some interest and people were asking for like 40 pounds and so forth. But then one, one guy actually came up and actually did buy it for 60 pounds. So I took a little bit of a loss on it, but ultimately it's a fake microphone, what can I expect? But the interesting thing that I found about this is that when he came up and actually bought it, he didn't actually do no checks, no nothing. He just kind of like handed me the cash, picked up the microphone, and then he was quite content with it. And then I just double checked with him. I just said like, you sure you're happy with everything? It does want to be very clear. It's a fake. It's not a genuine one. And he said, no, he's absolutely fine with that. But the funny thing is he actually said to me, he actually runs a podcast studio. And he says he suspects that he's even got some fake short SM7Bs. But he said to him, it sounds good enough. And his clients aren't complaining. And most of them just want the look of the short SM7B for social media. And I find that very interesting just because... As much as we're doing all these audio tests, going back and forth, A-B testing and stuff like that, and audio quality is important to a lot of us, but to the mass majority, it really doesn't matter. Because even myself, for the past two years, I was using a fake short MV7 thinking it was real. And without a side-by-side -side comparison with the audio, it's really hard to tell. But I just thought that was quite an interesting story. I have no idea if he's actually going to end up using this microphone in his podcast studio. And for all I know, he might actually just now buy it for cheap and then resell it himself on Facebook Marketplace with a little bit of a markup trying to claim it's genuine. I didn't think of that actually at the time when I sold it to him. I was thinking that could potentially be what he's doing. But nonetheless, my conscience is clear. I sold it as a fake. He bought it as a fake and it is what it is now. I just hope equally someone's actually gone through and done their research and maybe found my previous video where we're actually talking about how to check for a fake and maybe they can do their own due diligence and how ironic would that be if they actually check the microphone that I actually done the video with. If you're actually going for audio quality, the XLR output on this and the old MV7X to me sounds identical and if not just as good. The MVX, the MV7X is actually much cheaper. You're paying more on this one for the USB connectivity and those extra features. And I don't know how much the digital popper stopper is actually beneficial. I actually would rather myself, this is a personal choice, of course. I would actually prefer to have better mic technique and maybe even just get like a hardware thing where I get a bit more extra foam to actually help with the popping. But that's just me. And all those other features where you can actually put digital reverb and stuff like that, I have no idea why anyone would want to do that. So as before, between this microphone and the other microphone, if you're going for sound quality, just get the MV7X. If you're going for the other features, just know that you're actually making this into a USB-C microphone predominantly, and you're going to have all these additional features, which I don't necessarily feel are necessary, and you're paying the inflated price to have that additional USB-C connection and these digital features. Also, probably worth bearing in mind that as much as this LED here, I'm going to tap it back to the XLR audio just so you can hear it. This is no real benefit to anyone because there's no real benefit to anyone because at the end of the day, that is a USB-C feature. You wouldn't be able to use that mute f feature through XLR. So as an XLR microphone, if you're ever intending on using XLR, I'd rather you just go for the MV7X and get a digital interface for that, like I said in the last video, which is the MVX to you. But if the digital popper stopper and all these other features on the software side of things interest you in any way, maybe give it a go. But as I concluded in the last video, this mic's not for me. I'm gonna pack it back up. I'm gonna send it back next week. So the future videos will actually be more including the Shure SM7B and the Electro Voice RE20 because those are the two microphones that I'm really actually genuinely interested in. So if you're interested in any of those microphones, keep a lookout. Those videos will be coming soon. So hopefully in the next few months, I will have actually decided which microphone I'm gonna keep at my desk as my primary microphone between the RE20 and the Shure SM7B and have a much clearer picture about which one is best and why. But until then, this is the Shure MB7 Plus AB audio check between XLR and USB-C. Let me know if that's helpful to you and what you think of the audio quality in the comments below. Cheers.